first things first, grab one of these dollar store or Walmart plastic balls. I found this beautiful navy and white polka dot fabric from Walmart. Once you open it up, what you're gonna do is lie your ball flat in the middle of it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna gather the fabric. So when you get to the sides, you want it to look really nice and even. You don't want it to look disfigured. So make sure that you pull that fabric nice and tight and get all of those creases to line up perfectly. After you've tightened your fabric around the ball, you're gonna have some creases. Just make sure they look nice and pretty. Then you're gonna grab a zip tie and secure the fabric at the top. Tighten it really tight. And now I actually think, although this isn't for Halloween, this is for the beach, you could actually make some really cool ghosts like that. But now we're gonna cut off all of this excess fabric using some scissors. Now it's time to create a hanger and we're gonna use this beautiful navy non-wired sheared ribbon from nickseasonaldecor.com. I'm gonna take the ribbon, place it at the top, and then take that zip tie and place it around the ball. Now we're gonna take this greenery, which kind of looks like seaweed to me. And we're gonna start by breaking down a few branches. And the beauty of tonight's design is that you can use whatever products you have on hand. I'm a huge fan of using what I already have. Now we're gonna just dip this in our glue skillet and apply it straight to the fabric. So the fabric is a great way of securing your floral stems or any products for that matter, because it just really grips onto the hot glue and it'll stay in place. And I'm just circulating around the top. So another question we always get asked is what happens when these balls deflate? And what you can do is you can actually leave the opening for the air towards the surface of this and just poke a little hole right through the fabric and refill it with air. So now as you can see, we found a few adorable starfish as well as some seashells on my table. We're gonna just dip these in our glue skillet and glue them right in place, and it's gonna be so cute. So feel free to pick out your own seashells. I know lots of little boutiques and you know uh, seaside shops sell them, or you can order them online as well, or find them at Walmart. Here we have a few clamshells, we'll work those in too. And another little clamshell. And we also sell these adorable crabs, and I think these are gonna be the perfect match. So these are made out of tin, and they're double-sided. So to secure these, you can hot glue them in place as well, or you can just take them and wrap them around the greenery that's already attached. And I've already tried this and it took me forever to pull it off. So just take it and wrap it around the greenery and just twist, and this will stay. And if you ever decide to use this elsewhere by not hot gluing it, you can hang it directly on a tree. And we'll work in another crab on this side. Again, just place it wherever there's kind of a, a need for a little sea creature. And here is how our hanging ball turned out. I absolutely love it. And it was so economical and easy to put together. And I absolutely love it. So again, you can make these for any season or holiday and feel free to switch out the colors for whatever works best for your home. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Kretikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor and you're watching me on Home Talk. I'm gonna start out by giving the shutter a coat of white chalk paint. The white paint is dry and now I'm just measuring and marking the corner of my shutter off. Just doing a light pencil line as a guide because I never ever paint straight lines. All right, now I have my blue paint and I'm using a nice beautiful nautical blue paint and I am just going to paint this corner of the shutter. And because I'm an impatient crafter and I don't want to literally watch paint dry, I'm just gonna use my mini heat gun to dry that blue paint quickly. Now my blue paint's dry, I'm just gonna dry brush a little tiny bit of um, white to give it a little bit of a distress feeling. Now dry brushing is when you tap your brush in whatever color paint you want to use. In this case, the white paint that I painted the rest of the shutter with. And then you almost tap all the paint off of your brush before you put it on whatever project you're doing. You go in for just like a light, a little light look. The paint is dry and we're gonna move on. I'm using my yardstick and I'm going to make light lines down the length of the shutter, about an inch apart to make some stripes. I'm notorious for making crooked lines, therefore I need to make marks. Okay, now that I have my little pencil lines as guides, I am gonna start painting. I have some barn red paint 
and I'm going to fill in every other stripe. Okay, I did um, two coats of the red and let it dry. And now I'm going to go over with um, a little bit of the white color and I'm going to dry brush over the stripes. All right, now to finish up my flag shutter, I'm going to add a little bit of a coastal touch. And for the stars on the flag, I am going to use some starfish. So I'm just going to hot glue those on. This will look so cute outside for Memorial Day and the 4th of July. All right, so everything is dry on the flag. The starfish look super cute as the stars. I thought of one little detail I want to add because I can't leave well enough alone. I'm taking um, some just Dollar Tree nautical rope. And what I am going to do is I'm just gonna, I just want one ply of it. So I'm just untwisting it so I can just get a thinner piece. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little border around the flag area. So I'm gonna just do a drop of hot glue right in the corner. Now I'm gonna pop one end in there and then I'm gonna bring it straight up. I may actually put a little dot here a longer piece. That little rope is really cute. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of it now and then I'm going to go outside and put it on my front porch so you can get a full view of it. But here's a little peek of it the long way. I'm Jennifer Howard from Cottage on Bunker Hill. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you next time on Home Talk. So the first step, we're going to measure how much a wax we need for this for this bowl. I think this should be enough. Yeah, and then we're going to go and melt the wax. So when I just went first, I tried just like to attach this uh, wicks with the wax and it actually didn't work. So I had to report this again and uh, use my hot glue gun to attach the wicks so they're not going to be floating around because if they float around, that's yeah, not going to work. When the wax cools down a little bit, but it, and it's not too hot yet and it didn't uh, harden yet, we're going to add some citronella oil. And there is no rule for it. I like to add a lot. So the mosquitoes can stay away for good. Then you leave it to harden a little bit more. And when it's almost hard, but not completely, you add this um, dried oranges and the rosemary branches in. Then you simply need to cut wicks to length uh, and leave probably about half an inch of the candle and uh, light it up and enjoy it. And this way mosquitoes never gonna come too close to you.